Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, today we are going to learn about the Hurt Function Test. Uh, in the right side, you can see the list of the Hurt Function Tests, the tests which are performed for the investigation of various functions of the Hurt. Uh, these, these tests are performed to find out, or to sort out, or to figure out the pathology inside the Hurt. So, first of all, the biochemical tests. The biochemical tests are performed by simply getting the blood sample from the patients and uh, by examination of various biochemicals inside this blood. Uh, so, first of all, the SGOT. SGOT is abbreviated for serum glutamic oxaloacetic transaminase. Uh, this is a biochemical, this is a special type of enzyme which is secreted uh, by the hurt by the kidney by the liver and by the brain if there is some sort of injury or some sort of abnormality inside the hurt inside the kidney inside the liver and inside the uh, brain so this is not specifically advice for the for finding out the pathology inside the hurt but it can uh, but the increased level of SGOT can show that there may be pathology inside the hurt because this is um, this uh, this is examined for the sorting out the pathology inside the heart, liver, brain, or kidney. So the heart is also included inside the, these four organs. Uh, so uh, the SGOT is uh, advised for the uh, for finding out the pathology inside the heart. Uh, secondly, the troponin test. The troponin test uh, is also performed to check out the pathology inside the heart. Uh, the troponin test is specific for the heart. In the troponin test, we measure a specific type of protein that is called troponin, and that troponin is normally present inside the cardiac muscles. Uh, that is not normally present inside the blood. The troponin is not normally present inside the bloodstream. This is normally present only inside the cardiac muscle. If there is some injury, if there is some ischemia, if there is some necrosis, if there is some pathology inside the cardiac muscles, then this troponin is released into the bloodstream and the detection of troponin inside the bloodstream denotes that there is some problem inside the herd, there is some damage inside the herd, there is some ischemia inside the herd. This can also find out the, this can also sort out or figure out the, uh, or rule out the myocardial infarction. So the troponin is not present in any other muscles of the body. This is only present inside the cardiac muscle. So the secretion of this uh, into the bloodstream by the cardiac muscles shows that there is uh, some pathology inside the heart. Uh, number three, the ANP and BNP. The ANP and BNP is abbreviated for the atrial natriuretic peptide and the brain natriuretic peptide. Both of these are secreted when there is overload on the heart, when there is uh, increased blood pressure and that blood pressure is not uh, uh, decreased by any feedback mechanism. Then uh, after all the ANP and BNP is secreted by the heart. These are specific hormones which are secreted only by the heart and uh, these hormone lead the release of these hormone re leads to the decrease of blood pressure so uh, the detection of ANP and BNP inside the blood uh, serum or inside the blood shows that uh, there is uh, there is some hypertension to this patient there is some sort of uh, increased blood pressure uh, to this patient uh, the CRP is abbreviated for the C-reactive protein and the C-reactive protein is not normally present inside the bloodstream. Uh, the CRP is present inside the bloodstream when there is some sort of infection inside the body, when there is some sort of inflammation due to infection inside the body. The CRP is, is released by any tissue inside the body, not specifically by the heart, just like the troponin. Uh, the troponin is specifically secreted when there is some injury inside the heart, but the CRP is secreted when there is inflammation due to infection of any tissue inside the body, not specifically the heart. So the uh, the secretion of CRP or the detection of CRP inside uh, the bloodstream shows that uh, there is some sort of infection, or uh, there is some sort of inflammation due to infection uh, inside uh, any tissue of the body that may include the heart. So the infection or inflammation of the heart can also be uh, ruled out by the 
increased level of CRV or by the detection of C-reactive protein. Number five, the creatinine kinase. The creatinine kinase is a specific type of enzyme that is present inside very, very muscular tissues and that is not specifically present in the cardiac muscle. This is present in all type of muscles inside the body. So when there is some irritation, there is some abnormality, there is some uh, injury inside the muscles, uh, any muscle, then the creatinine kinase is secreted into the bloodstream. So that may also include the cardiac muscle. So the increased level of uh, creatinine can rule out uh, the abnormality or pathology inside the cardiac muscle. Uh, number six, the lipid profile test. The lipid profile test is uh, performed to figure out the risk factor for the heart disease. The lipid profile test include the detection of uh, HDL, LDL, VLDL, uh, triglyceride and uh, serum cholesterol. So all of these are the lipid uh, inside which are present inside the uh, the bloodstream so the increased level of HDL is not built for the heart but the increased level of LDL VLDL triglyceride or cholesterol can rule out the heart disease can increase the risk factor for the heart disease so if the uh, the level of these four biochemical is increased inside the blood it uh, it can figure out uh, and can and can shows uh, greater risk for the heart diseases. Uh, so, uh, and the HDL, the increased level of HDL do not. Uh, this is uh, considered as good good cholesterol. The HDL is considered as good cholesterol, and that is not uh, bad. The increased level of HDL is not bad for the heart. This do not uh, cause any pathology inside the heart. But increased level of these four biochemical can increase the risk factor for the. Uh, cardiac diseases now coming towards the physical examination and other tests which are performed for the sorting out of various heart pathologies uh, first of all the uh, blood pressure measurement the blood pressure measurement is uh, carried out with the help of spagmomanometer this is the spagmomanometer which consists of uh, the stethoscope this is the stethoscope which can which consists of the earpiece and the chest piece uh, then we have uh, another part of the spagmomanometer. The this is the cuff which is enraped from the hand from the uh, upper arm. This is the cuff which is enraped from the upper arm. Uh, the second one, this is the gauge uh, through which we measure. We can see uh, the level of the blood pressure. Uh, this is the gauge. Uh, this is um, this is the inflation bulb. This is the bulb. Uh, this is the knob um, with the help of we uh, this is the knob wall with the help of which we can uh, we, we, we can allow the one side flow of air into the uh, to this cuff so uh, we can measure the blood pressure with the help of uh, spagmomanometer and spagmomanometer consists of these two parts uh, number Three, the oxygen saturation measurement is uh, carried out with the help of oximeter and this oximeter uh, measure the level of oxygen saturation inside the blood it measure the level of oxygen inside the uh, um, uh, on the RBCs how it measure the oxygen uh, this is uh, this is attached with the fingertip uh, just like uh, this and uh, it emit a specific uh, type of light uh, which uh, uh, goes through the blood which goes through your tissue and the blood so when this light uh, strike with the blood stream it strike with the rbc's uh, so it detect the level of oxygen inside the blood so mm, the, uh, this contain two things one is the uh, this is the oxygen saturation and this is the beats per minute uh, or here we can see that the, the, this is the heart rate which is 76 per uh, minute and this is the oxygen saturation which is 98 so the oxygen saturation measurement is uh, and the pulse rate is measured with the help of oximeter uh, this is also called pulse meter and oximeter combination of pulse and uh, oxygen saturation uh, secondly uh, this is um, the echocardiography 
echocardiography is simply i can say that this is the ultrasound of the heart with the help of which we can uh, carry out uh, we can figure out the internal anatomy of the heart with the help of ultrasound the echocardiography is also called heart sonography uh, because this is the same thing as the ultrasound and this it uses or it uh, utilizes the ultrasound waves uh, with the help of we, which we can detect the internal structure of the heart over here we can see that uh, this technician is uh, holding the probe and uh, figuring out uh, the uh, internal anatomy of the heart uh, so this is the uh, echocardiography it can detect uh, various uh, abnormality inside the heart and now coming towards the uh, TEE TEE is abbreviated for the transesophageal uh, echocardiography this is also a type of uh, echocardiography but uh, the probe or hair which is used that is very small that is that can be inserted uh, inside the uh, esophagus that can be inserted through the oral cavity into the esophagus and uh, we can see the internal anatomy of the heart with the help of uh, this uh, TEE probe or uh, transesophageal echocardiography uh, when the normal echocardiography is unable to figure out uh, the internal structure or internal uh, anatomy of the heart uh, then we use the uh, TEE transesophageal um, transesophageal echocardiography or TEE uh, then we have the ECG ECG is abbreviated for the electrocardiography and electrocardiography is used uh, to figure out the electrical activity inside the heart during contraction and relaxation this can this also consist of uh, various number of leads which are connected uh, to the chest which are connected to the right and left arm which are also connected to the uh, right and left foot also uh, but uh, normally uh, in the simple ecg machine we only connect uh, the uh, lead to the chest and we figure out uh, or we get uh, the electrocardiograph or hair uh, which uh, gave uh, the electrical activity of the heart uh, then we have the Holter monitor uh, you can consider this uh, also as an ECG machine which uh, record uh, the electrical activity of the heart uh, for 24 hour or for 48 hour or even for uh, 72 hour so uh, if the long duration electrical activity uh, is required electrical activity uh, investigation is required then we uh, give the portable the Holton monitor to the patient and uh, this record uh, the electrical acti activity for the 24 hour and then after recording the 24 hour uh, electrical activity of the heart now uh, during contraction and relaxation this uh, Holton monitor is given to the physician and, they, and he find out uh, the pathology uh, inside the heart at various interval uh, then we have the exercise tolerance test ETT or the EST the exercise stress test uh, this is also to figure out the ECG the figure out the electrocardiogram of the patient uh, during the exercise or when the patient is under stress how this is figured out the the patient uh, is uh, applied uh, the stress uh, by standing uh, on the ramp uh, and he is uh, he is allowed to run on the ramp so uh, what will happen we will check out uh, the ECG of this patient uh, during uh, the exercise or during running of the patient or uh, at various in interval after running or during running or before running we um, figure out or uh, correlate uh, the various changes uh, in the ECG of the patient this is called exercise tolerance test uh, then we have very important uh, one uh, that is the angiography angiography is uh, a technique with the help of which we can figure out the internal uh, structure of the arteries inside the heart to have now we insert um, and you mean blood vessel and grappi mean to uh, to draw so uh, we draw the blood vessel how we draw the blood vessel we actually we see the blood vessel we insert uh, the catheter over here and uh, we also insert the camera over here with the catheter and that uh, that is forwarded that is uh, forwarded towards the iota and then to the aortic arc and then to the descending aorta after reaching to the descending aorta this is 
forwarded toward the coronary arteries this is forwarded toward the coronary artery and this uh, the camera at the end of this uh, probe at the end of uh, this catheter can uh, can visualize the internal structure of this artery if there is some blockade if there is some uh, atherosclerosis inside the blood vessel if there is some clot inside the blood vessel uh, then this figure out the uh, blood vessel this uh, actually uh, show the internal structure this actually show the internal uh, arrangement of the blood vessel internal structure of the blood vessel uh, so uh, this is um, uh, this is to figure out any blockade any uh, type of uh, spasm inside the blood vessel uh, this is called angiography this is invasive method uh, next we have the CT scan and MRI both uh, machine are having the same composition and both are used for uh, to figure out to, to see to visualize the internal structures of the body uh, CT scan and MRI can both of these can uh, are used to see the internal structure of the organ of the bones of the blood vessel etc uh, but uh, different, the difference between the CT scan and the MRI is that the, the CT scan use the x-ray radiation while the uh, MRI use the magnetic resonance uh, this do not use any sort of radiation this is uh, uh, very safe in uh, in every type of condition while the CT scan is not safe for each every, every type of condition especially in pregnancies uh, so the CT scan uh, and the MRI both uh, machine are having the same complexion and same composition the same but the radiations are and the cameras and the images etc are somewhat different the MRI is a bit in detail while the CT scan is not uh, in much detail uh, both use the same uh, imaging phenomena and both are used to see the internal structure of the heart, the arteries, the walls, the uh, by uh, the mitral wall, the tricuspid wall, the semilunar wall, all of these and the uh, internal, the cardiac tendon, etc. All of these are visualized with the help of the CT scan and the uh, MRI. Uh, then we have the maybe scan. Uh, maybe scan is also used to, to see the blood supply to the myocardium it actually see, this is also called the myocardial perfusion scan because we can see the blood supply to various parts of the cardiac muscles uh, how keep how can we see with the help of maybe maybe scan maybe scan is uh, if, mm, uh, during maybe scan we administered uh, radioactive protein a protein that is combined with the technetium uh, that is called radioactive maybe protein and that uh, radioactive protein is uh, administered intravenously into the patient after administration of the maybe protein uh, or the radioactive protein uh, we uh, apply that uh, the gamma rays of the maybe scan machine the gamma rays of the maybe scan machine is passed uh, through the patient and when the gamma rays are passed uh, through the patient it get the images of the heart of the patient the we get the images of the heart of the patient uh, and and those images we can see the perfusion of the heart in those images we can see the blood supply to various uh, parts of the heart to, to various uh, muscles of the uh, of the heart are various parts of the muscles of the heart uh, so if there is some uh, if there is uh, ischemia inside the heart we can see uh, we can see with the help of maybe scan this is uh, this is performed when the patient is not uh, uh, tol tolerating the angiography or when the patient is unable to uh, to get the angiography so when uh, we apply the maybe scan uh, then we have a very important machine that is called cardiac monitor. Cardiac monitor or multifunction cardiac monitor is usually present in the ICU, the intensive care unit, the high dependency unit, HDU or the CCU, uh, the cardiac unit. So uh, this is uh, connected with the patient, with the finger of the patient, with the heart of the patient, with the right arm, with the arm of the patient and various parts of the patient uh, with the help of leads. Uh, we can detect uh, more than four to f more than four to ten parameter with the help of this uh, cardiac monitor. Uh, in the diagram, we can see in this figure we can see over here that uh, we can detect over here the heart rate. This is the heart rate of the patient. Uh, this is the oxygen saturation of the patient, which is 98. 
uh, this is the respiratory rate of the patient which is 20 uh, this is the temperature of the patient which is uh, maximum is 37.7 uh, and minimum is 37.2 uh, and this is the difference between the minimum and ma maximum and the blood pressure 120 by 80 this shows the blood pressure we can also see the uh, the ECG of the patient we can also see the uh, the lungs volumetry of the patient so uh, the multifunction uh, cardiac monitor is very important monitor which uh, which are nowadays present in the uh, cardiac units